celebrating six decades of independence. Ghana was the first African country to secure autonomy and break free of colonial rule. It's a country full of life, from its beaches to its markets. I'm half Ghanaian on my dad's side, but haven't visited for more than a decade. Now I'm back and on a mission to discover whether or not the country really is going through what people here are calling an artistic revolution. From the legacy of slavery to the ideology of pan-Africanism, I've already explored how Ghana's political ideals have shaped its art. But now I'm looking to the future and meeting the next generation of artists determined to break boundaries. Today we've been invited into the studio of Serge Atakwe Klotti in the capital Accra. One of Ghana's most political young artists, he can paint and draw. But what he's really interested in is performance art. Serge's inspiration comes from what he sees as injustices in the country. From bribery during elections, to the cooking oil containers that are unsafely used to store water. like it's a huge responsibility for an, art, an artist not just to focus on him or herself but also to try to change the country or the nation based on the way they think. I think very differently and this is how I want to project for people to see. You know, So it's very challenging because you need people who will understand but everybody cannot understand. You have to start from somewhere so that is why I try to engage my community and based on that it spreads out to other communities because you know we have people coming from different communities to be part of us. So it's a way of channeling the idea into different spaces. You know. What are some of the challenges of creating art in Ghana? The older generation thinks that we don't understand what we are doing. And for me, I think that based on the way they think during their time is different from what we we get the chance to travel, to get the opportunities to collaborate with artists from different parts of the continent. So what we come out with something different from the way they think. You know, so it has been a challenge for trying to even engage them in the conversation. You know, they never showed interest. Now I think few of them are beginning to realize that how we think is completely different and the space in which we are is has changed. Serge's work has been shown in Europe and the US, but here in Ghana, one of his closest relationships is with Gallery 1957. Opened in March last year, it's named after the year Ghana gained independence. I can't quite believe it's taken until now for a commercial gallery to be successfully established. Marwan Zakam is the owner. A civil engineer by trade, he's lived in Ghana since 2003 and built the hotel that houses the gallery. Gallery 1957 really opened as a spin-off of Marwan's collecting habit. What's the most exciting thing in contemporary art in Ghana at the moment? This movement here in Ghana, I think is special. Now, whether I'm being biased or I'm right or I'm wrong, I don't know. But these artists that I seem to uh, have the luck to be working with, and many more, I mean, don't just, I don't have all of them. There are, you know, maybe hundreds of them out there. I go to fairs, I walk around the fairs, I don't see anything original, anything I want to buy. It's just the same thing over and over. Here, it's not the same, it's different. 
It's something, it's unique, it's, uh, it's, it's new, it's experimental, it's cutting edge. So yes, I think there is something happening in Ghana, but I think the Africa movement that everybody talks about has been here. It's just people coming to see it now, that's all. Marwan offers a rare space for Ghanaian artists to exhibit their work, and hopefully sell some of it too. Without support from the state or many other institutions, I can see how hard it could be to maintain morale. Many art students end up giving up within a year of graduating. But since 2014, there's been one art prize that recognizes and rewards talent. Because in Ghana, you'd find some artists would, they would give up because there's lack of funding for their practice. So they would give up in the shortest time to maybe get a bank job or enter into a different field than to follow their passion. So this is just one initiative to help support and then boost the morale of artists to continue practicing. The Quenyeha Prize for Contemporary Ghanaian Art awards the equivalent of five and a half thousand dollars to one winner from a shortlist of ten. It also offers business coaching and personal development mentoring, so it really works as a platform for young artists. This year's winner is Isaac Opoku. It started off with um, me exploring this uh, concept, it's a Yoruba concept called Ashe, which uh, talks about the vital force, the vital life energy that animates us all, that gives us life. Um, so as I came across in this amazing book called uh, Flash of the Spirit by Robert Farris Thompson. Um, you should definitely check it out if you get a chance. Um, so yeah, that's how I came about it. I, I was just like exploring this concept that talks about spirits and in my uh, exploration of it uh, came up with, I guess, a kind of visual language which is very fluid. And um, I created several pieces in that style. Uh, and it kind of naturally uh, fit with how I, I imagined, you know, developing my Instagram page. Uh, so I decided to turn it, the page itself, into an artwork that talks about all these things that connect my life. Like Serge, Isaac's not just limiting himself to one medium. He's into painting and design, yes, but also fabric. What do I hope to achieve? Um, a couple of different things, I'd say, on the educational front, just to be able to connect more with others and uh, share stories. For me, it matters a lot, just um, getting the real what I feel is truer history out there about black people and uh, things we've done in the past, uh, getting people to know more about ancient Kemets, the Medu nature, um, you know, things like that. Uh, educating ourselves about our history is the idea of a uh, Sankofa going back um, to learn. But all that stuff, all, that, all those histories are here now. It's just a matter of paying attention to it and drawing something from it. Um, what else do I hope to achieve? Uh, you know, just getting my work out there um, more in whatever ways, whether it's through fashion, whether it's through just selling pieces, um, just connecting with others, collaborating more with other artists, other creatives. Is it fair to say that attitudes like Isaac's and Serge's are representative of what's going on countrywide? This idea of globalization, of art that could be in any medium as long as it has a message. I think it's about time I make the five hour trip from Accra to Ghana's second city and its cultural hub, Kumasi. This is home to the place I've heard so much about from so many people. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I am Edwin Kwesi Bojawa, and I'm an artist. First 
and the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, KMUST. I am George Buma Amprechu. I am a faculty member in the arts department. My, my name is Kweku Boafutisiedu, um, popularly known as Castro. These guys, along with their mentor, Kari Kachasedu, seem to be responsible for spearheading Ghana's artistic revolution. In recent times, um, a lot of things have changed um, because we've made a platform for art a bit more broader, a bit more heteronormous in space and materials and processes. So that we've tried to move away from the very conservative form of education, uh, painting being so stereometric and sculpture planimetric, so, so to speak. And so we've expanded the field of mediums and media for making art and the processes and techniques. Um, and the criticality that it brings to society. They ripped up the Western rule book, instead considering what being in Africa means for art. So if you look at the traditional African home, you're going to see that the art is on the surface, it's in inside, and you couldn't just have one surface as the art piece. It was a, it was a cumulative of a lot of structures and that was one of the driving force for the way we we're going to look at art that it was going to be more democratic in terms of material, in terms of structure, in terms of how even the audience experienced it. Their ideas inspire one of the country's bravest artists who's still a student here in Kumasi, Fiatsi Vabene or Craziness. I'm meeting craziness in the studio or dressing room. In Ghana, ideas of gender roles are very fixed and homosexuality is against the law. When I entered the, the art school in 2010 and begin to get exposure to certain forms of uh, politics in terms of identity and in terms of uh, gender and also culture. I became so sensitive about very petty things that were happening around me. So I started experimenting first with the, 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 the female costumes. After two, three years in the art school, I realized there was much to what I was looking at than I was thinking. So because whilst I started, there were a lot of um, questions coming from my religious background. People started questioning my faith and my belief and the rest. And I realized I, I was getting demonized um, gradually. Then I decided, no, there is more to it. And the body itself is very provocative. Because if just by material, questions of this kind are coming, then the body itself is very much sensitive and provocative. And that also brings the mind brings to mind the idea of vulnerability. So I started putting myself in performative characters, um, moving from one community to the other, dressed feminine, braided hair. Sometimes I combine them with beard and everything. Then I leave audience to play around with words and characters and whatever. While performing female characters wasn't explicitly taught at school, this idea of rethinking artistic perspectives, performances and exhibitions was. The art that we had experienced up to the 1990s had also developed alongside it a network of distribution. And that distribution was a certain type of gallery system and with a certain type of clientele which was more pseudo-touristic or other people that were seriously interested in the art, but that art didn't have to do with the conduit of exhibition. And one of the central things that we thought we would focus on was exhibition. But in exhibition, then we needed to engage the public. And we were not too particular about how one buys this work or whether this work get bought. Um, so we needed to rechange, rethink the existing um, distributive and network structures and that did not exist then. So the student and the lecturers had to teach almost by faith, just believing that what we, would, we are doing will also propel 
um, other interested um, groups to kind of come in and also set up new structures. At KNUST, it's about concentrating on the next generation. Things are not going to be, you know, led by us any longer. If I'm talking about us, I'm talking about Karikacha, myself, George, Buma, Bojawa, and, you know, the rest. Uh, I think we are beginning to see the young people, you know, getting really involved. So we're expecting to see a lot more, you know, uh, students going out, setting up um, studios, you know, at home, uh, not depending on the, you know, the established galleries or whatever. We expect them to be forming like communities. They'll be talking to each other. They could have artist talks in their homes. Maybe today visit one artist, the next day maybe probably at the house of another artist. We expect, you know, um, and as it's happening now, a lot more attention, you know, coming to Ghana because we think what we have is, you know, very, very unique. Craziness has taken this attitude and adapted it in performance art and photo and video installations. These are, the, these are images or documentations from my studio works, um, stripping and redefining my soul. I call it, I call myself an entitled body, but trying to gain a new identity and play with the character of uh, feminine and masculinity and stuff. So I do the documentation at studio, buffing, dressing and making up over here, which are the same images I have over here. But even here, it's controversial. The artist's been arrested by campus police on multiple occasions, detained at airports, and physically threatened. When craziness began, the character of a woman was performed only on certain occasions. Now the artist lives as a woman every day. There is only one quote I try to develop and uh, borrowing it from the definition of government. That for me, art is for the people, by the people, and is the people. Yeah, so um, I think that is why it is important for me to live it as life. So the very people I'm living with within can feel the essence of it, even though they might ignore the importance of it, but they can feel it. They can, they can feel it and know there is a certain truth that I've been touched, but they don't go there. Yeah, so for me, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, so that's how I'll see, yeah, at <laughs> should be. Crazynist won't tell me when, but there are plans to at some point dissolve this female character and live as something else. What exactly that will be? Craziness not saying. So, possibly maybe I'm a walking art. Yeah, and this performance will live for some number of years. Yeah, which for now I'm not ready to disclose how long I want to do it. But it's for a number of years. And unless I die before the time I'm looking at, but if I'm alive, after that year, the performance will shift to a different thing altogether. In a country like Ghana, I'm pretty amazed at the artist's bravery in visiting all parts of the country dressed as a woman. I'm half Ghanaian, and even I get stared at by locals. We're not quite sure if I'm one of them. Leaving Kumasi and heading back to Accra, there's only one destination in mind. To try and get a better handle on what's going on with contemporary art in Ghana right now, I need to speak to the newest wave of artists. So I've come to Orderly Disorderly, the end of year show put on by students from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The show is staged by Black Star Lines Kumasi, the project space and creative hub of KNUST. It's held in the capital and it's free to the public. 
Orderly Disorderly is open for three months and features the work of 106 artists. Most are current KNUST students, but there are also alumni and special guest artists. The work is huge, it's messy, it's abstract, it's alive. So the um, exhibition puts together uh, works by these different generation of artists, um, fostering that dialogue between, you know, these eras and what happens between them. We're also um, opening up the exhibition to a wide range of audiences. We are saying that everybody is invited. The conversation on, on art today uh, in the 21st century, we're saying that we're opening it up to um, immense possibilities. So we're now populating it. So we don't make presumptions about who is an artist or who can be or who understands or we all start from an equal um, standpoint. Orderly Disorderly is also about sacrifice. The curatorial team have to be here every day for the entire three month run. Most live in Kumasi, so must find somewhere to stay for the duration. Curator Bernard Akoy Jackson walks me through pretty much every single artwork. I want to know how he feels about the fact that these young artists have to do everything on their own. I mean, it's unfortunate that there's no government uh, uh, funding for, for, for art. But uh, I think it's also the blessing uh, in disguise, uh, in that, yes, there's no one to um, account to, not, uh, not in the sense of not being responsible, but there's no one to uh, taper or uh, um, skew your practice to in, the, in praise of, for example. You are free to express, you are free to comment on anything, knowing that it's your own uh, funding, your own funds, your own uh, people that you depend on. If government started to uh, talk about funding for the arts, a lot of the artists would start getting skeptical, like they would ask, what, what's the agenda here? Is there something fishy? So yeah, it's good that there's no funding. Uh, it also teaches us as artists to pool our resources together. And I think this is the spirit of Black Star Alliance. baggage of history, geopolitical uh, history and so on, um, equips us, you know, to, 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 to be able to really understand our times. So for me, what is happening in Kumasi, um, people like uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, you know, Mabi Fawaz and other um, thinkers and activists and politicians have really, uh, you know, raised these questions and opened them up. We're only continuing the legacy of, uh, you know, trying to come to terms with our time. What I've seen on this journey across Ghana is a community, a movement of young people using whatever tactics are at their disposal, whether that's social media, performance art, found materials, to get their art seen and recognised. They're political, without being consumed by the idea of post-colonialism. They carry the weight of history without being weighed down by it. Ghana welcomed a new government earlier this year, and for the first time, there's now a minister dedicated to tourism, arts and culture. This offers some hope that in the future, there will be more funding from the state. But regardless, these artists have shown they can get things done on their own. And for me, that is the real lesson. more connected to my roots. For me, it's amazing to see how a nation 
which only formed in my dad's lifetime, has reclaimed its identity. And a lot of that is through art. There are major industry challenges. There's no funding from the government. There is no infrastructure. There are no local patrons or collectors. But despite that, the art industry here in Ghana is not only growing, it's thriving.